Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker-puffed wheat and Quaker-puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Say, if at breakfast time you're... Yes, hungry as a lion... Well, sir, just you dive into a heaping bowlful of delicious Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Man, oh man, there's a treat that'll tame the old appetite. In fact, it's the cat's meow. Yes, these ready-to-serve giant grains are shot from guns, are nourishing, crisp, tender, loaded with nut-like flavor. So tomorrow, enjoy this breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. It was hard work paddling against the current. When the sergeant rounded the bend and saw the landing directly ahead on the left bank, he welcomed the sight. That's where we'll put up for the night, King. We won't even have to make camp. But for some reason, the great dog was uneasy. He stood in the bow of the canoe, his nose lifted into the breeze, his ears alert for any sound. What's the matter, boy? The sergeant could see nothing wrong. The landing was like many others along the Yukon. A dock, the woodchopper's cabin, and the large pile of logs the river steamers used for fuel. As the sergeant drove the canoe into the bank, the door of the cabin opened and an old man stepped out. He waved his hand in greeting. It isn't like you to be so unfriendly, King. The sergeant beached the canoe and then pulled it up on the bank. Well, howdy, sergeant. You don't know me, but I've seen you and King around Dawson. Name's Jug Benson. Hello, Jug. Can you put us up for the night? Well, sure thing. Glad to have the company. How long have you been here? About a month. This used to be Harvey Collins' place. Of course, Harvey Collins. He had a son called Glenn. What's happened to them? Well, they've gone back to States. Oh? Harvey made me a present of his cabin. You selling much wood? Enough. It's getting near the end of the season, though. I don't think I'll get rid of all the cut before the freeze-up. Well, come on inside, Sergeant. All right. Supper's on the stove. Be ready in a few minutes. Don't you want to come in, King? I guess he doesn't. I can't exactly blame him, Jug. You see, he's been in the canoe for the last three hours. Like to stretch your legs for him? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, pulling at your coat. He wants you to come with him. Well, I could use the exercise. You mind if we take a little walk? Uh, go right ahead. But uh, try to get back in about 15 minutes. All right, we will. Come on, King. <laughs> The sergeant was sure King wanted to show him something, and that the something was in the forest that rimmed the landing. But he laid a restraining hand on King's harness and started walking upstream along the bank of the river. It was not until the cabin was out of sight that he let King go. Now, fellow, where is it you want to take him? Go on, I'll follow you. King plunged into the woods. He led the sergeant to a point almost directly in back of the cabin. And then he started nosing in the underbrush at the side of an overgrown trail. Oh, looks as if someone fell into this bush. The branches are broken. Wait a minute, King. What's that on the leaves, those spots there? Don't like the scent, do you? I wonder if this could be blood. Go on, King. Which way to go? Find him. King started forward at the sergeant's command. He followed the old trail, and every now and then he'd stop and sniff at the leaves of the bushes beside it. 
Always, when the sergeant looked closely at them, he found the same sort of stains he had seen before. A wounded man? Is it an animal, King? Go on, show me, boy. The trail cut deep into the forest. And then suddenly, King broke away from it and headed straight into the tangled undergrowth. Yes, King, I can see. I forced their way through here. And there are footprints. Not one man, but two. Go on. It was getting dark now, and King moved warily. At last, he came to the edge of a deep, tangled hollow. And down below, the sergeant could see a light through the trees. The faint glimmer of a campfire. Steady, King. The man and dog moved forward without making a sound. It took them 15 minutes to reach the bottom of the hollow. And there, they found themselves on the edge of a small clearing. By the light of the fire, they could see a man lying on the ground. A younger man was kneeling beside him, watching the forest closely. As he turned his full face to the sergeant, the Mountie rose. Who's there? Put up your hand to us, shoot. You can't even see me, Glenn. Why should you want to shoot an old friend? Who is it? Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston. King. Who's there? Sergeant Preston King. It's all right out there. They won't get us. I'll save my questions till I take a look at your father. Is he badly hurt? He stopped the bullet. Just below the shoulder. Oh, I see. We had to keep moving and he lost a lot of blood. He's weak. I have an aid kit in my pocket. We can dress it a little better. Daddy Crooks. Don't try to talk, Harvey. You're going to be all right. This is only a flesh wound. Now, this antiseptic will sting, but it'll be over in a second. Oh. I'm sorry. I know. Don't mind me. Better now, isn't it? Yes. You're sort of good. Warm. Go on, Glenn. You can start talking now. Where'd you come from? Have you been at the landing? Yes. Well, weren't they there? They? It was only an old man. Said his name was Jug Benson. I don't understand. He said he was a friend of yours. Well, he is. He was staying with us. They took him prisoner at the same time they got us. Who are they? Let's have it all from the beginning. Well, the three of us were in the cabin last night. Jug and Dad and myself. We heard some men outside. Well, it sounds as if we have some visitors. I sure hope they're all right. Probably just some prospectors. There's no telling these days. There's an awful lot of rough customers around. Uh, go on, Glenn. Open the door. All right, Dad. Well, howdy. Your name Collins? Yeah. That's the right place. Come on. Right hey, now, wait a minute. What do you think you're doing? For coming in. What does it look like? I'm sorry, men. I can't put you up for the night. You can see for yourself that we have no room. That's too bad, mister. But if anybody's going to sleep outside tonight, it's going to be you. You're making a mistake. Am I? This gun says I'm not. Now, grab them, boys, and tie them up. Right. Oh, 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 what about the old man? Oh, please don't hurt me. I won't make any trouble. How about cooking us some supper? Yeah, I'll be glad to. I'll do anything you say. I'll hop to it. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. What do we do with those two? Throw them over in the corner. You heard them, boys, in the corner. All right, come on. You're sure this is the right place? I told you, didn't I? Well, there's a lot about this job I don't understand, and I want to get straight on it. You wouldn't even tell me who was the... Never mind that. All you need to know is this. The steamer will stop here the day after tomorrow. It's carrying plenty of gold. We board it, get rid of the crew, and sail it all the way down the Yukon to St. Michael. We split up the gold and take an ocean steamer for the States. How can you be sure this river boat will stop here? It's all arranged. The captain's sick and the mate's in charge. He's in with us. Are you satisfied? Yeah, I guess so. The day after tomorrow, you say. Yes, we don't have to. So you see from the talk, we got a pretty good idea of what they were up to. How'd you manage to get away from them? Well, after the eight, they put Dad and me out in the shed. I worked at my ropes all night. Just about daybreak, I managed to get free. I untied Dad. There's no lock on the shed, and we made a break for it. But they saw us. Dad was hit. How is it now, Harvey? Better. I'm okay. You managed to give them the slip? Yes. They're still looking for us, though. The sergeant, if you were able to follow I our wasn't. Trail... It was King who did that. Did Jug tell you what happened to us? No. Oh, no, of course not. He, he couldn't have it. But if he was all alone there at the landing, why didn't he? He wasn't alone. What's that, Harvey? He wasn't alone. Just what did he say to you, Sergeant? He told me you and Glenn had gone back to the States and you'd given him the cabin. See? See what? Did you go in the cabin? No. He wasn't alone in there. They made him go out and meet you. Maybe they didn't want to shoot you. Just take you prisoner like they did us, just as soon as you stepped inside the door. Well, it could have been, I think. Oh. 
King certainly didn't want to go inside, but I thought it was only because he wanted to show me something in the woods. And he did, your trail. Good boy, King. <laughs> what are you going to do, Sergeant? Well, let's see. The steamer should be warned before it gets to the landing. Well, that's what Dad and I were going to do when we made our break. Head upstream toward Dawson. When we were seen and he was hit, there was nothing to do but try to get away and hide. What's the name of the steamer? I don't know. It must be Pride of the North. Only six in the crew, they said. That's right. And ten men in the gang. Yes, the skipper must be warned what his mate's up to. Then there's Jug at the landing and your father here. I'm okay. You will be if you can rest for a while. It's dark now. We're safe here, aren't we? There's your fire. Well, Dad was cold. My tunic's heavy. <laughs> Maybe this will do instead of the fire. How about it, Harvey? Yeah, well, fine, Sergeant. Feels good. Then we'll put out the fire. Well, here, I'll do it. That's the idea. I'd like to get my canoe if I can do that without being... Oh. What is it, boy? The men were silent, watching the dog. He sniffed the breeze and growled deep in his throat. Then, in the distance, they heard a shout. Come on! This way! And a moment later, an answering call. Closer. Much closer to the hollow. That was Spike. Sounds to me as if he's found your trail. Well, what'll we do? Stay here. But, Sergeant, there's too many to fight. You have a gun, but we don't. You and Harvey stay here. King and I will work our way up to the top of the hollow, and we'll let them hear us. Try to lead them away from you. There aren't any embers showing, are there? No. Now, just stay here and don't make a sound. Come on, King. <laughs> When the sergeant and King reached the top of the wooded slope, they waited until Spike and his men, crashing through the underbrush, were less than a hundred feet away. Not being very careful, are they, King? But of course they know Harvey and Glenn are unarmed. Well, this is no time for a showdown. Come on. There they go! Toward the river! Let them have it! We'll continue our story in just a moment. nothing like it. Yes, there's nothing like that big moment out at the old ballpark when... This is it. Folks, the ball game's all tied up. The fans are going crazy. And here it comes, that big three and two pitch. The batter swings. There goes the ball. Back, back, back. It's a home run. Yes, moments like this stand out. There's nothing like it. And for breakfast, nothing stands out like a heaping bowl full of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Just pour out some milk or cream and top with your favorite fruit. You'll say, this is it. Stand out. Stand out in flavor, crispness. That's because Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are giant king-size kernels. They're the premium grains of flavor-rich wheat or rice. And they're shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Bigger and better tasting. And like that batter who comes through with a solid base hit, wheat and rice shot from guns delivers solid nourishment. Yes, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So ask for crisp. Fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. They're never sold in bags or bulk. Always remember to buy the big red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Shot from guns. Now to continue our story. The first direction the sergeant and king took as they plunged through the forest ahead of Spike and his men was west. This was toward the river. But in less than a mile, the sergeant turned to the north. Lead them away from Dawson, King. We'll keep them following us for a long time before we lose them. The sergeant set a pace well within his own capabilities, but deliberately calculated to wear out his pursuit. It was dark in the forest. Still, an occasional glimpse of the pole star through the trees was enough to keep him on the course he had set. At last, long after midnight, he increased his speed and made a wide circle toward the Yukon. By the time he reached the banks of the river, he had lost Spike and the others. Then he and King headed upstream, back toward the landing. There was a faint tinge of gray in the sky when they saw it. 
The sergeant's canoe was still drawn up on the bank. There was a light showing in the cabin window. Easy now, King. We don't know who's inside there. The sergeant and King moved silently from the shadow of the wood pile to the cabin. And then... No one but the old man. Come on, boy. Hey, who's there? Preston. Oh, oh, sergeant. Thank goodness. Tell me, did you find Harvey and Glenn? Yes, I did. Where are they? Are they with you? No, but they're safe. Did they tell you about Spike and what he's planning to do? Yes, why didn't you do that? But how could I? They were inside the cabin. They were holding a gun on me. Who was holding a gun on you? Uh, the one they call Lefty and another one. I don't know his name. Where are they now? Uh, I don't know. Around here somewhere, I guess. I was asleep, and when I woke up, they were gone. Well, then why didn't you try to get away? Sergeant, I'm an old man. I was afraid to try it. They said they wouldn't kill me if I took their orders. What if I'd run into them? Well, I'm heading upstream to warn the boat... Want to come with me? Of course. Let's go, then. Uh, wait a minute. You haven't had anything to eat. There's some stew on the stove. Wouldn't you like a plate of it and a cup of coffee? Yes, indeed. Well, I'll have it ready for you in a minute. Oh, King must be hungry, too. Right. We don't want to waste much time, though. Well, you've got to eat. I don't know where you've been or what you've been doing, but you both look all tuckered out to me. <laughs> and if you're going to paddle that canoe up against the current... <laughs> Yes, Sergeant. Thanks. And uh, here's some for King. Oh, uh, how about keeping watch at the window? Yeah, as soon as I get your coffee, uh, you uh, want some condensed milk in it? Oh, Black will do that. Right. Here. You'll feel a lot better after you drink it. Here. Thanks. Now, uh, tell me. You're going to stop the steamer, huh? The mate belongs to the gang, you know. He might cause trouble. They say the uh, captain's sick. Now, what will happen... Well, now, look, Doug, this is why... The sergeant discussed his plans with the old man as he ate the stew and drank the coffee. When he had finished, he rose from the table and walked to the window. Seems to be all clear. I'll just check my gun in case. All set, Doug? Yes, indeed. Let's go. The old man took his place in the bow of the canoe... The sergeant shoved off and stepped into the stern. King had taken his place amidships. The sergeant held the craft close to the shore and out of the main current. With Jug paddling in the bow, they made fair time. But suddenly King, who was watching his master's face, began to whimper. Something was wrong. The sergeant stopped paddling and put a hand to his forehead. Got a headache, Sergeant? No, it's my eyes. I I can't see. Want to go in the shore? Oh, I don't think so. I'll be all right at home. The sergeant, who had been paddling from a kneeling position, fell forward on his face. Sure, you'll be all right. All you have to do is sleep for about eight hours and you'll be fine. <laughs> Jug maneuvered the canoe into shore and then pulled the bow up on the bank. Step aside, King. You want me to get your master ashore, don't you? King refused to move from in front of the sergeant or to let the man come close to him. Come on, boy. The man's voice was soft. There was no menace in the sound, but still, King didn't trust him. There was something in the man's eyes he didn't like. I'd like to get his gun. I'm not going to lose an arm trying <laughs> After all, he won't wake up in time to use it. All right, King, have it your own way. You and the sergeant can stay right here. This is the last time you'll be seeing me. Jug hurried along the bank of the river back to the landing. There was no one around, and the sun was well up as he opened the door of the cabin. The old man muttered to himself. The fools, aren't they here? Pride will be coming around the bend another hour. And then he heard Spike and his men. They straggled into the clearing, dead tired. Well, a fine lot you are. They got away from us, Chuck. But they headed north. They can't spoil our plans any. So they got away from you. All right, don't make any difference. I've got a fine hunch you've been chasing Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston? You mean there's been a Monty around here? That's right. Where is he now? He finds out we're sunk. He knows all about what we plan to do. What's that? Then you can count me out of this deal. I don't want to tangle with him. Well, thanks to me, you don't have to. Jug, I thought there wasn't going to be any shooting. 
You haven't killed the Mountie. No, I gave him a cup of coffee. But, a cup of coffee? With enough knockout drops in it to make him sleep for half a what? day. What? How'd you get a chance He to... didn't guess I was the brains behind this job. He thought I was Colin's friend. That I was your prisoner. But you were all alone here. <laughs> That's right. A poor old man afraid to move. <laughs> After he drank the coffee fixed up for him... We started south in his canoe to warn the steamer. He passed out about a half a mile from here. And if you want to see him, you can. Lying in his canoe, dead to the world. <laughs> Did you tie him up? His dog wouldn't let me get close to him. It doesn't matter. Now, let's get things straight. If the steamer docks, Judson will send the crew ashore for the logs. I'll be the only one they can see. The rest of you will be hiding behind the cabin. I'll whistle once. And you come a-running. Right, Judge. Right. We take care of the crew first. Then the captain and any passenger may be. None of them will be armed. All we have to do is knock them out and tie them up. Put them all in the cabin. Then we leave. <laughs> Next stop, St. Michael. The ship of the sticks. <laughs> Don't let anybody get away, though. Use your guns if you have to. All right. Yeah. Yeah. How much gold is there on board? Plenty for all of us, according to Judson. Yeah, there she is. That must be the pride. Yeah, a long way from here. We have plenty of time to get ready. <laughs> Between the landing and the steamer, the sergeant still lay in the bottom of the canoe, unconscious. But Jug had made one mistake. He had put too much of the drug in the coffee, and he had not allowed for King... Somehow, the great dog sensed that his master was not sleeping. Somehow, he knew that he should be roused. Every few minutes, he would take the sergeant's shirt sleeve in his teeth and shake him. The sergeant would groan, but he wouldn't waken. And then a memory stirred King. He had seen the sergeant throw water on an unconscious man. The dog jumped into the water. Then climbed back into the canoe. He shook himself violently, and the ice-cold water from his coat stung the sergeant's face. What is it? Suddenly, pain racked the sergeant. Oh. He raised himself, still groggy, from the bottom of the canoe and leaned over the side. The sergeant was deathly sick. A moment later, he raised his head. Steamer King? What happened to me? Where's Jack? I must have been drugged coffee he gave me. Oh, King, I should have guessed the reason he didn't run away from the cabin was because he was a member of the gang. Well, he tried to get me out of the way a little too hard. We're going to board that steamer, King. A few minutes later, on the bridge of the steamer... What's the matter, Mr. Judson? What? You should be in your cabin, sir. I'm still in command of the Pride. I make my own rules, and I want to know what the matter is. A canoe, sir. I signal for it to get out of the way. You signal too late. You're going to hit him. Hard a port. Hold over now, sir. Look out! The canoe's wrecked. The man and the dog, there they go into the water. Reverse your engines. Aye, aye, sir. He can swim ashore, sir. There's no need to pick him up. It's my order, Mr. Judson. We're going to pick him up, if only for me to give him a piece of my mind. Stand by to haul that man and his dog aboard. The sergeant and King were alongside, and the captain stood ready to greet them. But the expression of anger faded from his face when he recognized the Mountie. Thank you. Yes, Captain. Why did you steer your canoe into our path? Because I signaled for you to stop, and you didn't pay any attention. But why? Why should you want us to stop? That's a matter you and I should talk over in private, if you please. All right, Sergeant. This way. Take over, Mr. Judson. Twenty minutes later, Jug stood on the dock and watched the Pride make a wide circle and nose into the landing with its bow headed upstream. He smiled as he waved to Judson on the small bridge. Oh, there! You want to pull a load of logs? There's plenty here. Throw me a line. I'll make it fast. Get a line ashore there. The sergeant and the captain watched the steamer being tied up from the porthole of the captain's cabin. When the gangplank was lowered, the crew went ashore and headed for the woodpile. They hurried until the pile of logs was between them and the cabin. You believe the gang is in the cabin? Or the woods. Either way, the woodpile will give the crew protection. 
At that moment, Jug whistled, and his men came racing from the cover of the woods, their guns drawn. But the ship's crew drew pistols from inside their shirts and ducked down behind the woodpile. Now's well, the time to show myself. All of you, throw down your guns and stand where you are. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. He's pressed and the crew's got guns. There's nothing we can do but give up, Jug. That's right. I'll show you, Preston. Oh! Anyone else want to shoot it out? You're all out in the open. You'll make fine targets. Don't shoot I give up. I give up. That's better. Come on, King. Jump some, you dirty double crusher. Why didn't you warn me? What chance did I have? I've been covered every minute. Go on, men. Gather up their guns. Come on, you now. Let's go. Instead of the crew being taken prisoners, it was Jug and his men who were tied up that morning. The sergeant led the way to the hollow where Collins and his son were still hiding and the wounded man was brought back to the landing. Then, out of gratitude for his narrow escape, the captain offered to take the sergeant and his prisoners back to Dawson. This will make you lose over 24 hours, Captain. Well, that's a small price to pay. I still have my ship and the gold I contracted to bring to St. Michael. There's something I still don't understand. What's that? You said I double-crossed myself. That's true enough. You see, you were a little too generous with your knockout drops. Instead of knocking me out, they just made me sick. And with King's help, I managed to snap out of it in time to stop the bolt. But, Sergeant, you might have lost your life. I had to make up for my mistake in trusting Jug. But it's all settled now, Captain. These men will go to jail for attempted robbery and murder. Your ship and your gold are safe, and that means the case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Here's how Mother can make your family a breakfast-happy family this coming weekend. Be sure to order Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Just one bowlful of this swell-tasting, nourishing, ready-to-serve cereal shot from guns, and you'll say nothing tastes so swell, except maybe two bowlfuls. But mind you, to get the original crisp, fresh wheat and rice shot from guns, always buy the big Quaker red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Quaker puffed wheat or rice is never sold in bags or bulk. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the ambush near Selkirk. When King and I arrived at Selkirk one night and were asked to help trail a couple of fur thieves, we thought it would be just a routine assignment. But King and I found out differently when the killers waited for us in ambush near Selkirk, although I expected them to be many miles away. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from guns. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Popped Wheat and...